Hello, my fellow Ripplers. This is Chris Miles, your cash flow expert and anti financial advisor. Welcome to our show that's for you and about you. Those of you that work so hard for your money and you're now ready for your money, start working harder for you now. You want that freedom and cash flow today, not 30 or 40 years from now, but right now to live that life you love with those you love. But most importantly, it's not just about living rich, it's about living a rich life because as you're blessed financially, you can enrich the lives of others. And that is the kind of ripple effect I'm here to create for you. I thank you for tuning in. I appreciate you guys binging. You've been sharing with others. Again, I can't thank you enough for, for really making our show one of the top shows in the country, if not the world. So again, thank you for being some of the best listeners out there today. As always, remember to check out our website, moneyripples.com. On there, if you're looking for specific topics, whether it's about passive income, whether it's about infinite banking or whatever it might be, We've got different pages on that now. So be sure to check that out and see what updates we've made. So go there today. Chris Miles was able to retire twice by the time he was 39 years old, but he's not content to just enjoy his own financial freedom and peace of mind. Chris wants you to have your own ripple effect so you can live free today. He's not the financial advisor you expected. He's the anti-financial advisor you deserve. He's jumping behind the mic right now, ready to make waves. Here's Chris Miles. All right, guys. So I have a special guest today that uh, I thought was so intriguing and interesting that I thought we should have her on. Karen Briscoe here. Now, she is the not only a mega real estate agent, but she's also the creator of the transformative five-minute success concept. Uh, she's the author of four books, um, host of the five-minute success podcast and productivity coach, which you'll also hear me on as well coming up here soon. Uh, real estate success and Five Minutes a Day, Secrets of the Top Agent Revealed was featured in InMan, as well as must read of your best year in real estate. And so it's one of the top ranked books out there today. Uh, she's primarily in Northern Virginia, as well as Maryland and DC, has done tons of real estate all over those areas. And so excited to have her on. So Karen, welcome to our show today. Chris, well, I love the whole idea of both cash flow and money ripples. I mean, there's lots of ways to <laughs> live a a good life now, as you said. So I'm thrilled to be on the show today and and share with your community. Yeah. Well, give us some backstory before you became this mega real estate agent, right? This mega success and author. Uh, tell us more about uh, where your path came from. Well, I started out in dirt. So <laughs> going back to dirt, yeah. I uh, was a real estate developer actually in Dallas mm -hmm. in the early 80s. And the idea of buying land and putting streets and utilities and selling lots to home builders. And that is what launched my career and how I really learned about understanding value and creating value and just market knowledge, uh, strategy, and uh, negotiations. And then fast forward, my husband's career took us to the D.C. metro region I live inside the Beltway near the CIA. So whenever you see those movies that flash into Langley, just I'm right down the street from that. And was the primary caregiver for our children as they were growing up because my husband's career in public policy meant a lot of travel. And I appreciate that I had that opportunity. But when I reentered the workforce, I wanted to get back into the commercial real estate space. And I went to work for Nextel and had the sales engineering of warehouse offices. What I found pretty quickly was there's nothing more boring than a bunch of sales engineering of warehouse offices. <laughs> and it was during the tech bus. So this is important to think about when companies are in disposition mode, there usually isn't any money. And I said, well, why don't I do the other side of real estate? Somebody said, well, why don't you do residential? You seem to like people like houses, which is what seems to be why people choose residential real estate. But what I found was I really do have both sides of the skill set. I have this hard skills, the market knowledge, the negotiations, the strategy. And then I have, I really do have the soft skills. I enjoy the people helping them with in many cases, their largest purchase and in investing. I work with a lot of investors and I'm an investor myself. And so I met with success very rapidly. And mm -hmm. fast forward, the market was rising. And, you know, we're in a similar market cycle right now. This isn't my first rodeo. Uh, the market was rising at a rate of double digits every year for five years in a row. Two of them were over 20%. So not surprising. It first uh, just flattened for a couple of years. 
06, 07, and then 08, the crash. Uh, in the meantime, I met with a woman who was number 10 in the nation at the time, and she asked me to join her team and become partners, and which I did. Uh, sadly, she passed away in 08. And that was mm. the same month the financial markets crash. So oh, it was a very wow. challenging time in my business life, in my professional life. But I'm a resilient person, resourceful, as you can tell. I'd already been through a number of market corrections. So I'm like, okay. Mm -hmm. And I joined with my current partner, Lizzie Conroy in 09. She joined me. And we set about rebuilding the business. And as I did that, many people were like, well, I first figured out how to survive. And then I figured out how to thrive. And and there were quite a few people that made it through the market. A lot of people didn't, but those that did. But I was really the only one that did it and I had lost my partner. So people asked me to coach, speak, train. That led to the writing of the book uh, because I had many people say that they found my stories to be sticky and memorable. <laughs> And they felt like I should write a book. And that that led to the book. And the book led to the podcast. I like to say my book asked for a podcast on its birthday. And so that 5-Minute Success Podcast now has over 400 episodes. And I'm looking forward to doing a pod swap with you, Chris, on that. And the other yeah. books have come since then. But it's been quite a journey, an opportunity to uh, really learn and grow and can contribute back uh, to all sorts of folks, including your community. Just fascinating. I mean, one, I think it's amazing that you went from Dallas while they were shooting, you know, while they had the TV show Dallas, yes. and then you went from there to DC, which is a completely different world. Um, it is. A, that, that must've been a huge disruptor for you. Culture shock. Absolutely. And what often happens when people come to a, an area like the DC metro region, you know, it is major sticker shock too, right? I mean, we're, we're not quite California, and we're not quite Boston or New York, but we're we're up there in an international city. And so mm -hmm. it, it, we have a very sophisticated clientele. Our average sales price, a mega agent you introduced me as is someone who runs a major team, but is not a brokerage. And mm -hmm. our team in 2021 sold 116 million. Oh, wow. Our average sales price is 1.1 million. So very Fishing sophisticated DC. clientele. Yeah, the clientele, we have a lot of high ranking, you know, government officials and lobbyists and the Amazon HQ2 is in our region. So we have Amazon executives, a lot of tech. So mm. very sophisticated clientele. So that is uh, an opportunity to constantly sharpen the saw. That's for sure. Yeah, it's interesting. Even just three years ago, before we had this, you know, massive inflation further on the prices, I remember I was offered a a short-term rental that we were staying in for the week, right near the the courthouse, and right that little row home, that hundred almost hundred year old row home, they were trying to sell for a million dollars, and I was shocked. I was just floored that that place would go for a million. You know, I could barely walk up the stairs without hitting the walls. You know, because there's such a narrow stairway. But I mean, those it's it's pretty spendy to live there. It took about 15 years to get back up to the last peak, so we uh -huh. had about 15 years of recovery. Uh, we now we're the market is experiencing real appreciation. I'm not quite sure if it's inflation because if you were talking to the sellers during all those years ago, well, I still haven't got back what I had before. So until <laughs> I, I get that back. Uh, so I, I remind people that there was a lot of years where there was no increase in value. So it is all happening pretty rapidly. Although this is very typical of rising markets. Say mm -hmm. real estate is a unique commodity in that the value mostly due to the lending environment is uh, based on appraisals and appraisals mm -hmm. are based on most recent sales. So by that just basic understanding of that, prices could never go up because mm -hmm. it always has to be based on a last sale. So yeah. what has to happen is a rapidly rising market where buyers are willing to pay more than the last sale and willing to make up the difference if they have to, the lender won't, um, the lender's appraisal doesn't value it. And so even though it seems like a challenging time, the market actually needs these type of cycles. Now, th the question is, how long will it last? Well, that's one thing I want to ask you that. as well. <laughs> yeah, well, you again, you've had, 
Yeah, 40 years of really yeah, experience years. on both sides <laughs> of the equation, yes. right? You've been on yes. the dirt side and the development. You've been on the real estate side, on the retail side. Uh, I mean, based on what you're seeing here, I mean, because you've seen all kinds of markets, it's never quite the same, right? Things always tend to change, what I've noticed over the years. Uh, what do you see right now? Like what what kind of lessons are you learning or even how you're responding based on your, your experience? It is a different market cycle than the last run up. And the last run up was based on, for at least the Northern Virginia metro region, DC region, was based on the buildup of Homeland Security in response to 9 11. Um, mm. The nationwide run up was based on easy lending yeah. <laughs> uh, and the, you know, the derivative market and things that really weren't structurally sound financially to mm. begin with. So it was a house of cards. And I actually saw it and predicted it and advised people as best I could. The Dodd-Frank pretty much uh, put lending back in to the, you have to actually qualify the framework. You don't have, to have, a which is, you have to have more than yeah, that. Right? Yeah, you actually you have to be able to qualify and have money and you have to have a job. And, and so that is not going to be what causes is key to this market. Mm -hmm. This market has several things that are unique to it. One is demographics. So the baby boomer generation were the largest generation in the United States uh, at 79 million. The Every generation after that was smaller, uh, mm -hmm. generally about 15 million smaller. So until the millennials, so the baby boomers birthed the millennials and the millennials are 91 million. And so that's already a delta of mm -hmm. housing because most housing was built for the baby boomers. And so right. we were already going to run out of houses. Just people weren't projecting enough what we were going to need housing uh, wise because the, the millennials are reaching their peak adulting years uh, right now. So 34 is this is the peak years. And if you just look at other cycles that the millennials have been in, all of the things that they were the first at, you know, needing you know, the schools and then the college, all of them, when the millennials hit, they everything needed to create more space for them. The other thing to consider is housing starts. So like new construction, not infill, not tearing down an old house and putting in a new, but new construction starts. Statistically, we're about 25 million every decade since the 70s. And in 2008, with the financial markets crash, the most of the builders lost their options and their lending to buy, uh, to build houses. So it, they only built 5.8 million. So we were already yeah. short like 20 million houses before mm -hmm. we entered a pandemic and a demographic that was going to need houses. And so it really is a it's a perfect storm. And the thing is, it, is it's likely to last a while because. With construction costs going up and materials costs going up and land costs going up, it's, building it's, slows down. They're not going to be able to catch up with the rate that they need to uh, build houses. So, and right. what will happen is the millennials will have more children, have more dogs, they'll need more space, they'll have higher incomes, they'll buy bigger houses. So, this could be a pretty long trend, actually. Yeah, that's the one thing I keep telling people. It, well, beyond the fact that this is way different than when I was. I was a mortgage broker in the mid 2000s. So I saw. Ah, you know exactly I, what I'm talking about. Okay. Oh, yeah. I saw just now how easy talking. lending was. You didn't have, hey, as long as you had a good enough credit score, you could just throw out there and say, I make this much a month. And they'll say, great, you get a loan. And that does not happen anymore. That kind of lending doesn't happen. And, and as you mentioned, that we've had a, a housing shortage for a long time, uh, for several years. And we're still trying to catch our breath, trying to catch up to that. And it's uh, nowhere in sight nearly compared to where it has been. So uh, I definitely agree with that uh, that assessment. So, well, tell us about these the five-minute success. Uh, tell us more about that. So when I was doing this coaching and speaking and training, when people asked me how I did it, I would you know, mm -hmm. encourage people to work on their personal business development because yeah. that's how you achieve and it, it sustains success over time, right? I mean, and it's like, you know, working out at the gym or whatever. You got to do it pretty frequently to have the impact. But people invariably said they didn't have enough time. And so I said, well, do you have five minutes a day? And that's actually a great way to break people's, you know, limiting belief that they don't have time, right? Is to say, mm -hmm. limit the time. Um, it's, it's actually Parkinson's law. So Parkinson's yep. law states that limiting and restricting will actually 
make you more effective and efficient. And you, I know you've had this happen, Chris. I mean, right before you get to go on vacation or, you know, you're, you're going to be more efficient the day before or the week before. And the idea of limiting the time, people could commit to that. And then by working on it every day, you know, creating that consistent habit, uh, then they're more likely to sustain, you know, a consistent success. And so it led to me then becoming this time guru, because uh, what I found is, is that this whole idea of people being busy and not having enough time, you know, if you think about it, everybody has the same amount. I mean, it's yeah. the, the one asset we all are given equally, but some mm-hmm. people, you know, achieve amazing things and some people don't get anything done. So uh, that's where really the opportunity to have these conversations about how people can achieve high level success by investing, you know, five minutes a day or small amounts of time to take it to the next level. And before we even ask about some of the habits that you can do in the, in those five minutes, uh, let me just ask you, what were the best way for people to follow you? What's the best way they can do that? So it's really easy because it's a number five minute success. Mm-hmm. And that's the podcast, the website, almost all the social media. Uh, on the real estate space, I'm I'm very Googleable, uh, Karen Briscoe. <laughs> and I, I promise you, you'll have, I have most of the first page. If you put anything in there about real estate or five minute <laughs> success, uh, you're going to find me. Perfect. That's great. And we'll put that in the show notes too, just for people in case, in case they're driving, they don't have the ability to write it down or remember it. But Again, 5minutesuccess.com is easy to remember at 5 minute success with the number five, right? That's, I think that's pretty simple to remember. Um, so tell us, what are some of those habits? Like what can people do in those five minutes that can literally change the course of their lives? Well, this habit that the book is to read the book, right? Real estate success mm-hmm. in five minutes a day. So there's key principles. Uh, even though every day is different, I felt like the profile of the real estate agent or the salesperson or the entrepreneur is, you know, they're always wanting, you know, the next new thing, right? So I was like, okay, I'm going to give you the next new thing every day, but it's going to fit into some basic fundamental principles. But the the idea of uh, the habit formation, there's been a lot of research on that. Mm-hmm. And, you know, I'm sure you've heard the whole Jerry Seinfeld, uh, you know, how did he, you know, become a, a good comedian? And that was, he made a commitment to, write a joke every day and he mm-hmm. very low tech had a calendar and used the red x so the idea is to develop consistency some of the key research is they say 66 days uh to develop a habit now if it's truly a habit you want for your life uh then you're going to go beyond the 66 days but this is idea to launch uh, a habit and what they've found is that the first 21 days, many people are very excited and almost evangelistic about their habit. Like think about the people who get a Peloton, right? They're all over uh-huh. social media with it. Then often what happens is the next 21 days, people go through just an evaluation period, kind of a dip, like Seth Godin talks about the dip. But the idea mm-hmm. is things that you want in your life that benefit you, you want to power through that dip, right? You don't want to stay down there. You want to get, you know, go into the other side because you start to experience the benefits of it, right? A good habit, Mm -hmm. you start to experience the benefits of it. You want to do more. And so the idea is you want to uh, stay with it consistently long enough to put it into practice in your uh, life and business. That's great. That's wonderful. I mean, I I think one thing that's important if you're, whether you're an entrepreneur, especially if you're a busy entrepreneur, right? Because there's so many people out there with that hustle mentality. And I know I, I got out of the phase where I said, hustle's a lie. <laughs> you know, trying to hustle every day. It's There's hard work, but then there's hustling as a habit, which I think can be dangerous, right? Where you go too far and you curate your own rat race. But taking those five minutes, even just focus on that one thing. Um, I remember uh, I read a book by Napoleon Hill, a lesser known one, talked about 52 weeks to grow rich. They would have one thing you'd focus on every single day for a week, and then you'd move on. You try to master those things versus just, you know, listening to it, saying, oh, that's a good idea. And then you move on with your day. This is something where you can just focus and make that the focus of your day, correct? So what I found is, is there's several reasons why this is a benefit, this daily mm-hmm. reader or whatever uh, format. It's because too much information is like tsunami, right? I mean, it's just like, mm-hmm. I can't absorb it, like you said. So what happens when you take it in and implement it, then you're more likely to remember when you need it. And you could have uh, the ripple effect is one of the effects. I love it because it's like throwing 
you know, the pebble in the pond and it ripples out. Sometimes yeah. it's a domino. So it knocks over a bunch of things. Uh, sometimes mm-hmm. it's a snowball. So it builds. Uh, sometimes it's an exponential thing. Like you just like, you have this major shift, this paradigm shift and everything changes. So exponentially, but the idea is these actions are going to um, increase the likelihood because you're going to be consistent of putting it into practice. That's right. And I found that once you put it into practice, you go from understanding to knowing, right? Because once you start to really know it, like when people say like, well, I know that already. Well, no, if you knew it, you would do it, but you well, haven't been doing it, right? You <laughs> yes. got to actually know how to put it into practical use, practical application. So that it actually creates a real change, lasting change in your life. Yeah, information without implementation is just entertainment, which I'm happy to entertain you and your, you know, your community here. Uh, But if people are on this, you know, listening to this podcast, and they want to make real change, they want to get out of the rat race, they they truly want to build passive wealth. Uh, This is a, a very key fundamental way that other people have done it to achieve a higher level of success. I agree. I, I like that definition too, that application without implementation, right? Or, or the information without implementation. That's really just the news. You know, when you think about what's entertainment, the media, <laughs> there's yeah, nothing you can do about it. They just right. give you lots and lots of information, but nothing to implement on. It's just entertainment. So, you know, it's, it's, it's mental garbage. <laughs> and if you think about it, it really, they look at it that way too, because they're always mm-hmm. looking for the sensationalism because they're trying to re- right. create a higher dopamine hit. So then you'll mm-hmm. tune in, right? So they really do recognize it as entertainment. It is not news. It is entertainment. That's right. Our whole goal objective for you guys, no dopamine hit. We, we want you to be as bored as possible so that your life will change for the better. So there you go. We want boring for you. <laughs> Oh, well, we want, we want something that'll be interesting enough that you'll implement it too. <laughs> that's right. Or see At least your life will be boring. Yes, but your life will be boring. No. That's right. Well, I really appreciate your time today, Karen. This has been great. Fantastic. Again, you know, one more time for our listeners, where will they go to find you? Number five, Minute Success and Karen Briscoe at HBC Group at Keller Williams. Perfect. Karen, again, thank you for your time today. And everybody, you heard it just like we've heard us say before. It's not just about getting in the information. It's really about how you take the information going from a hearer to a doer so that your life can change. And it's not just about doing anything. It's about doing the right things. So go make sure you check out Karen's book, check out her website, go check out 5-Minute Success Podcast, make it a wonderful and prosperous week, and we'll see you later.